Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Van Heflin and Anne Blythe in Once More, My Darling. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. There is one resolution that we at the Lux Radio Theater make every year, and that is to bring you the very best in entertainment. So we shall start off tonight by presenting Once More, My Darling, a romantic comedy with two of Hollywood's favorite stars. Now, in our play, you'll notice there are one or two situations that are a trifle unbelievable. For instance, adorable Anne Blythe is cast as killer. And one of our very best performers, Van Heflin, is a frustrated actor. But this just sets the stage for some very romantic and amusing escapades in this recent Universal International release. You know, although lovely ladies make many new resolutions for the new year, one habit they never change is Lux Toilet Soap for their complexion care. A perfect resolution for your new year is not to miss one day of being Lux Lovely. Now, once more, my darling, starring Van Heflin as Collier and Anne Blythe as Killer. <laughs> In the spacious living room of a dignified old home in Los Angeles, an amiable bachelor named Collier Lang is standing in front of a mirror. Mr. Lang is about to rehearse a very important speech. All right, Mamie, start the phonograph again. I think I'll get it this time. Just as you say, Mr. Collier. Mamie, you're sure we don't have any other records? Nothing really appropriate, Mr. Carly, unless you like Boogie Woogie. Oh, forget I mentioned it. Yes, sir. Once more, my darling, if say goodbye, we must. Once more, let me look at you. Remember, this look must last me many years, all through the emptiness ahead into the final darkness of the grave. You doomed me to silence, my darling. Never more can oh, I man look... man doomed to silence. You sure ain't shooting your oh, mouth off. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Never more can I say your name. Never more can I hold you close and whisper, I love you. Nah, nah. And, and, and so farewell. But though I am gone and forgotten, let me... Good say... one in this leg. This is the best one yet. Oh, your language is madness, pure madness. If you'll hold your tongue, madam, I'll continue. Not in my living room, you won't. Mamie, you're excused. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Now tell me something. Why? Why should any man with your law practice want to be a movie actor? Well, in the first place, I'm rather good at it. Well, if there were any truth in the rumor that actors spend all their time surrounded by beautiful blondes, I could understand it. In the second place, I like to act. Then do it in the courtroom where you belong. Relax, madam. I lose the heroine tomorrow. That finishes me in the picture. But you're going on with this acting nonsense, aren't you? Oh, why not? <laughs> oh, you just wait till you see me in this picture. But you're a good lawyer. You're a... Oh, well. Acting's been a nice little change for you. I'm glad you've enjoyed it, dear. But tomorrow morning, when I go down to the office, you're coming with me. And give up this happy life? Oh, no, no, no. Don't you have any misgivings about the future? No, not very often. You're a highly successful attorney, madam, and you make a good provider. I'm grateful to you. Well, I'm a tough old bird, all right, but I can't last forever. Collie, did you ever notice how quiet this old house is with just the two of us in it? No, I can't say that I have. Don't you ever long for the patter of little feet? Don't tell me that at your age you're thinking of marriage. Yes, yes, I am. For you. Oh, oh. Yeah. I might make a pretty fair mother-in-law if I ever had the chance. Oh, incidentally, the Frobishers are coming for dinner tomorrow. They're bringing their niece. Oh, so that is what all this talk about little feet has been leading up to. But she happens to be a very brilliant girl. She also happens to but be one Charlie, of... Charlie, the telegraph company's on the phone. Telegraph company? Well, that's nice, Mamie. Say something to them. They want to know why you haven't answered that telegram. What telegram? Oh, Mr. Collie, I gave it to you this morning. 
You said put it in your coat pocket, and that's just oh. what I did. Oh. I bet it's there right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, so it is. <laughs> Telegram. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Mamie. I'll tell him it's just been delivered. Well? Oh, it's just... Uh, oh, this is ridiculous. It is? Well, they, they, they wouldn't dare. Just who do they think they are? Something from a movie critic, dear? What, uh, just look at this. Well, go on, look at it. Well, 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 bless my soul. To Captain Collier Lang, military police. Well, go on, go on. Return to active duty this day. It's absurd. Report immediately to Colonel Charles Head, Bank of Commerce, building Los Angeles, for special duty. And signed by the adjutant general. Dear me. No, 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 no they won't. I, I've served my time. I'm a veteran. I've been decorated. And who's Colonel Head, dear? Uh, he's one of your legal eagles. And the worst kind of a legal eagle. An army legal eagle. And they can call you back just like that? Yes, they can, but they won't get me. I'll, I'll take my case to the highest court in the land. Why, this could ruin my picture career. Yes, it could, couldn't it? The War Department obviously is plotting my ruin. Well, meanwhile, you better think about reporting to Colonel Head. You bet I'll report to him. Maybe they don't know that a private citizen still has rights in this country. Collie, what's the matter with you? You're limping. Of course I'm limping. My knee, the one I hurt so badly at ping pong that time. You haven't limped in years. Madam, there is a conspiracy afoot to rob me of my status as a civilian. Now get out your law books and prepare my defense. Yes, dear. And don't be intimidated by this ridiculous telegram. Remember, it's nothing but the United States government. All they can do is throw you in the penitentiary, Captain. And stop calling me Captain. <laughs> Good morning, Captain. Is uh, Colonel Head in? I'm Mr. Lang. Uh, oh, uh, this, uh, this is my mother. How do you do? Just a moment, please. Uh, yes? Captain Lang is here, Colonel. Have him come in. You may go in, Captain. I will not go in without my mother. <laughs> he won't go in without his mother, Colonel. Without his... Well, we'll send him in. For the first door, Captain. Thank you. Well, good morning, Captain Lang. Sir, uh, this is my mother. Yes, uh, yes, of course. Uh, very nice of you to bring her. She is also my lawyer. Lawyer? You see, Colonel, while my client thinks you have a splendid army, just this once he'd like to be excused. I beg your pardon? He finds it quite inconvenient at this time to be called back to the colors. Oh, he does. Well, I hope the captain doesn't find it inconvenient to remember that according to a certain act of... Sir, I also remember a paragraph called Appeals for Deferral. Captain Lang, certainly you're not going to put your own interests above those of your country? Really, Collie, when he puts it like that, I don't see what we can do. Oh, oh no, 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 you don't, sir. Now, I am not a hard guy to get along with, and I helped out before, but if you don't mind, I'd like to appeal to the adjutant general. Well, it just happens that the adjutant general himself picked you for this job. He did? Oh, well, in that case, an appeal is impossible, isn't it? Goodbye, son. Face it like a man. Very well, madam. Goodbye. I shall see that you get my allotment. <laughs> now, Captain Lang, if you'll just follow me. There are some men waiting to see us just down the hall. Uh, this is Captain Lang, gentlemen. Uh, how do you see Hello. You, you certainly know how to pick them. Why, Captain Lang's the prettiest military policeman I ever saw. Yeah. Say that again. Uh, gentlemen, please. Captain Lang, this is Mr. Burke, Special Federal Investigator, Mr. Nichols of the Civil Affairs Division, Dr. Gasser, International Authority on Gems and Jewelry. How do you do? How do you do? How do, you do? As you know, gentlemen, Captain Lang served with considerable distinction in the European theater. Without his mother? Mr. Burke, please. <laughs> no doubt, Captain, you'd like to know what this is all about. Well, if it's not too much trouble... There's an old German family in Upper Bavaria, Captain, called Margrave Schillingstoest Henschweimer. Well, I'm not at all surprised. All through the war, they managed to hang on to what was left of the family jewels, about $600,000 worth. But two years ago, somebody liberated the jewels. Uh, naturally, Captain, we have searched endlessly, but not a trace. And then, and then we see this. A magazine, huh? Boy, this boy's sharp as a tack. A magazine, yes, an advertisement in the magazine. A full-page picture of a beautiful young lady. Here, read it. Miss Marita Connell, prominent debutante. Then go on, go on. Miss Connell is gorgeous, well, well adjusted, popular, and she uses Passionel, the perfume of passion. 
Now, observe the picture of Miss Cotton. The jewel pendant the young lady is wearing. Oh, oh yes. Uh, that pendant, sir, is from the Margrave Schillingspost Henschweimer Collection. So we checked the lady without her knowing it, of course. We found out that she got the pendant from a boyfriend, Peter Vellon, a little gift. Uh, d- do you mind looking at me when I talk, Captain, instead of at her picture? Must I? This Vellon is a professional jewel thief. He was drafted during the war and for a while was stationed at the Henschweimer estate. Well, then pick him up and let me go home. Unfortunately, Peter Villain has disappeared. Does uh, Miss Connell know he's hot? If she did, would she wear the jewelry in an ad? Mm. Anybody talk to her? Oh, we can't afford to take the chance. For all we know, she may be in love with Vellon. Has she heard from him? Well, apparently he sent some explanation as to why he hasn't been heard from, but uh, that's all. And uh, where do I come in on all this? Well, in addition to your other qualifications, Captain, we understand you're quite an actor. Oh, well, I, uh, no starring roles as yet, Cam, but I Because get... you're so pretty. <laughs> Vellon is desperately in love with Miss Connell, as we can see by his recklessness in sending her the pendant. I don't think he intends for anyone else to have now, her. Now, just a minute. But we uh, think that you can sweep her off her feet with suitable publicity, of course. Vellon reads the publicity, comes out of hiding, and falls right into our hands. Any questions? Yes. Where do I find the lady? She and her father are vacationing right here in Los Angeles, that uh, hotel in Brentwood. Uh, They're in one of the cottages. I see. Miss Connell is beautiful, rich, and smells of passionel. I rush in, cold, and ask her to fall in my arms while she'd left me right out of town. I'll bet on that. Oh, would you, G-Man? Well, how much? A hundred bucks, even money. But no fair getting mother to help you. Mr. Burke, you've got 32 teeth. Would you like to try for none? (laughs) Okay, Colonel, I accept the assignment for my country. (laughs) Hey, uh, kid, you, uh, you, uh, wait wait just a second. Uh, Oh, hello. Are you a guest at this hotel? Oh, yes, yes, I am. Oh, I've just been playing tennis. Oh, well, that's fine. Uh, By any chance, do you happen to know where the Connell cottage is? Oh, sure, but didn't you ask at the desk? Every way I knew how till they threatened to throw me out on my ear. Really? Uh, For some reason, old man Connell wants privacy for himself (laughs) and daughter. Oh, well, I'll be glad to show you the cottage. Oh, thanks. That's uh, that's quite a costume. Dark glasses, sun visor, (laughs) and that (laughs) T-shirt. See what it says on the shirt? Uh, K-I-L-L-E-R, killer. I have a pretty strong forehand, and some people gave me the shirt as a gag. <laughs> Say, you, you know something? No, not a thing. You're awfully good looking. I've just been redecorated. Oh. Well, there's the Connell cottage. Gee, I'm sorry there isn't a puddle so I could take something off and spread it for you to walk on. Well, I, I wouldn't want you to catch cold. Good afternoon, Miss Connell. Oh, hello, uh, Alfred. Did did he just say Miss Connell? Well, naturally, of course. You are Miss Connell? I'm afraid you can't come in, sir. Mr. Connell's orders. Is it about perfume? Perfume? You saw me in a magazine, didn't you? Well, who didn't? Father says every man in the country saw that advertisement and that they're all on their way over. Well, I'm here only because I, I uh, represent a public opinion poll, Miss Connell. You see, uh, we'd like your views on current events. Oh, honestly, I wish I could help you, but my father's still sore about this passionel thing. And besides, his stomach hurts him. Well, let me talk to your father. I don't advise it, Miss. Your father is out on the terrace. But, uh, he, he wouldn't want to stand in the way of progress, would he? Where would America be without polls? How would we know what the stock market was going to do or uh, or uh, who was going to be president? Or, you have uh, a terribly emotional nature, haven't you? Oh. Close the door, Alfred. He's staying. Uh, uh, very well, Miss. I'll never forgive myself, Miss Connell. I, I should have recognized you the moment I saw you. Why? Well, something... Stirred in my heart, and I... You mean that? Yes, yes, of course. Well, I'm going to be perfectly frank with you. Something stirred in my heart, too. It did? Yes. May I have your name? Oh, uh, call you Lang. Oh, it's lovely. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, shouldn't I see your father now? There seems no other way out. Father! Uh, 
What is it? There's a gentleman here from a public opinion poll. This way, Collier. Oh, what? Uh, my name is Lang, Mr. Connell. Call you Lang. I'm delighted to meet you, sir. What is all this? What do you want? Well, one of the privileges of my job, sir, is meeting with distinguished Americans such as you. Americans who... Who let who, this uh, in here? Well, as I was saying, sir, our poll is honored. Your have... poll? Fine job you poll takers have done. For your information, I'm a Republican. Well, uh, uh, we're also interested in your daughter's opinion, sir. Uh, I happen to be head of the Youthful Viewpoint Department. Wouldn't it be all right if I said a few words, Father, from a youthful viewpoint? Mr. Lang, my daughter is not available for statements, endorsements, or pictures, and that's final. Are you responsible for this polecat being here? No, Father, he just came because... Because of that idiotic testimony you gave to that perfume distillery. We should have stayed in South America. But, Mr. Connell... You keep out of this. No, Father, I have no control over what... You simply have no control. Mr. Connell, I think you're being very unfair. Oh, so you think I'm... Albert? Find Herman. Send Herman in here. Herman's my bodyguard. Oh, oh, oh. Well, now, why bother Herman? I'll just run along. Well, it was nice meeting you, Mr. Connell. I'll walk out with him, Father. You'll do nothing of the sort. Herman! Well, goodbye, killer. Too bad, huh? Oh, it's dreadful. I would have just loved telling you about my youthful point of view. <laughs> Collier, you're still here. You didn't go. Well, I thought if I hung around the hotel grounds long enough, I'd see you again. Oh, you really are terribly emotional. Oh, have you met Herman? He's also our chauffeur. Hmm. We've been glaring at each other for an hour. Hi. Hi. <laughs> if you'll just give me a chance to explain things, Miss Connell. Oh, absolutely. Shoot. Uh... <laughs> you, you won't believe this. Oh, but I will. Well, I have a confession. I have no connection with any poll. I, I uh, saw your picture in a magazine, and uh, it uh, it drove me mad. Oh, that's faint, isn't it? And now that you've told me, I can tell you. What? If I'd seen your picture, it would have done the same thing. Well, I, I'm... Uh, oh, I must apologize for the way my father acted. Oh, I ask you to be patient, Collier. Well, I'll try to be. Oh, thank you, because I think in the years to come, you will grow to love him. I will? I'm on my way to a tea at my aunt's. Why don't you drive me there? Oh, no, no, you don't, Phyllis. Oh, but Herman, look at him. How many chances like this have I had? Your old man told me not to let you out of my sight. Well, you can follow us in the limousine and keep an eye on us. No, wait a minute. Herman, are you with me or against me? Okay, Kill, I'm with you, but no funny stuff, see? Here's my car, Miss Connell. Uh, you can, uh, you can depend on me, Herman. Oh, I ain't worried about you. Oh. <laughs> uh, this way, Miss Connell. You drive beautifully, Collier. I just love the way you shift gears. Thank you. My, you're... <clears throat> You're fragrant. Oh, passionel, you know. They gave me crates of it. Call your tell me about yourself. Well, I'm just like any other clean living, high spirited American boy. Married? No. Engaged? No, no. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh, I suppose dozens of girls are chasing you. Well, no. No, except for my mother, I'm entirely alone in the world. Oh, I'd like to meet your mother, Collier. Well, I'd like her to meet you, too. You would? Oh, Collier, from the moment I... No. No, that'll have to come later when I know you better. I don't want to scare you. Oh, besides, that's my aunt's house at the corner. Hurry up, Kelly, you're late. Oh, I'm going, Herman. Gosh, I... Hate to leave you, Collier, but my aunt would squeal to my father if I didn't show up. Well, I'll just have to kiss you goodbye and run. Well, I don't. Well, <laughs> well, thank you. I, um, uh, I guess I, I could wait for you, couldn't I? You will? You're not just saying that. Promise? Cross my heart. Oh, you're simply wonderful. Goodbye, Collier. Goodbye, killer. Have a nice tea. Hey, yo. Yeah, yeah. 
Your lipstick is John Crooked. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> thanks. Uh, is that better? Yes. <laughs> Fine weather we're having, Herman. Mm-hmm. He's a nice kid, Miss Connell. A little, uh, a little impetuous, maybe, but <laughs> full of laughs. Carly, I'd like to have a talk to you, man to man. I think the world of that kid, Satan. They do creep into your heart, don't they? Yeah, the killer is innocent, full of ideas. To her, everything is on the up and up. For instance, she was interested in some bum that sends her jewelry, but anybody can see that the bum was a bum. Is, uh, is he still hanging around? No, I ain't seen him lately. Carla, I think maybe I like you, and the killer likes you. It's real pleasant. But don't let the blood rush to your head. No. What I'm trying to say is, if you've done something silly to the killer or hurt her feelings, I'd beat your brains out. <laughs> it's me telling you this. Heyman Schmelz. Seven times contender for the middleweight crown. Do I make myself clear, oh, Carl? Yes, 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 perfectly clear. Well, I'll, I'll <clears throat> just run along back to town. Hey, Carl, you. Yeah, yeah. You promised the killer you was going to wait for it? Well, yes, I did, but I... Then you wait. Hey. <laughs> yes, sir. I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> An hour later, the impetuous Miss Connell has had tea with her aunt. And now, in a state of complete ecstasy, she's been squired back to the hotel by the patriotic and slightly bewildered Collier Lang. You know, Collier, without a doubt, this has been the nicest day of my life. Well, after today, after what we've been to each other, I, I just can't bear to say goodbye. Oh, I'm glad you brought it up. I can't either. Well, uh, what about... Tonight? Uh, oh, yes, I'd love to. Uh, Tonight is ours. Well, couldn't tomorrow night be ours just as well? Oh, but who knows, Carly? I mayn't even be here tomorrow. I know. I'll tell Father I have a headache, that I'm going to bed early. What about mighty Joe Young over there? Who? Uh, Herman. Won't, won't oh. he get suspicious? He usually goes to a movie. Oh, this is all so wonderfully romantic, Collier. Nothing like this has ever happened to me. Has it ever happened to you? Has it ever happened to anybody? Well, I'll see you at uh, 7.30. Well? Huh? Huh? It's all right, Carl. You, you can kiss me. Oh, no, no. Uh, wait a minute, uh, Killer. I I think I'd, I'd uh, like to get to know you just a little bit better. Oh, I'm sorry, Carl. Well, you see, if, um, if I gave in too easily to you, I might do the same for some other girl, and you wouldn't like that now, would you? Gosh, no. I honor you for it. Thanks, killer. But Collier... Yeah? Yeah. Watch out for me tonight. Well, as soon as I got home, Colonel Ed, I thought I'd better phone you. Seriously, Colonel, a thing like this is apt to lead to consequences. You don't know this, Miss Connell. No, sir, no. She she hasn't mentioned the jewelry and not a word about that Peter Vellon fella you're looking for either, but... Tonight, tonight, it's 7.30, and I'll, I'll be perfectly happy to sit in a nice, quiet restaurant with Miss Connell and hold hands, only... Uh, yes, uh, yes, sir, uh, I'll do my best, sir. Holly? Oh, good evening, madam. How's all your legal machinery this evening? Fine, Captain, thank you. Oh, you're out of uniform. Then your duties are confidential, I guess. Never mind what my duty is. I'm on my way to pick up a gorgeous girl who smells heavenly. But but what about the army? You didn't resign your commission. No, of course not. Well, do you have to be so vague? And what about tonight? You know the promise Oh, I'm coming. sorry, dear. I, I forgot all about this date. New girl? Oh, uh, brand new. Actress? No, debutante. Lovely young thing with a terrific forehand. Forehead. Yeah, everything perfectly clear to you, madam? Oh, oh, yes, yes, perfect. Good, I wish I could say the same. I'll see you later, madam. Is 
Isn't it wonderful, Collier? We've made a clean getaway from the hotel. Hmm. You notice my perfume? It's Passionel. Does it do something to you, Collier? Yes, it does. Oh, boy, exactly as advertised. Do you sense a, a lurking madness? Does the stuff intoxicate you? Well, I am kind of dizzy. Collier, do you believe in love at first sight? Uh... I didn't until I met you. Oh, Collier, we've got to make the most of every moment. Yes, we must, mustn't we? Where are we going? Well, there's a nightclub I know. It's, it's quite oh, a... Oh, but let's go and see your mother first. Why? Well, we'll have to sooner or later. Oh, oh, no. Uh, not, no. Well, not tonight, Killer. Tonight is ours. Youth is calling to youth. You don't want me to meet your mother. Oh, no, no. It isn't that at all. It, it's my mother. I, I don't want to rush her. Uh, besides... Talia, it... I want to meet your mother. Now. Okay, Killer. Let's meet Mother. <laughs> Lovely house, Collier. Well, aren't you going to open the door? I've been thinking, Killer. Wouldn't it be better if I broke it to her first? You know, after all, I'm I'm all she's got. Her boy, you know. Just open the door, Collier. Everything's going to be all right. I've got a lot to offer. Yeah, but don't offer it all at once, will you? Just take it easy. <laughs> Evening, Mr. Collins. I wasn't expecting to see you back so early. Yeah, I know. Uh, Mamie, this is uh, Miss Connell. Evening, Miss Connell. May I take your wrap, please? Why, thank you, Mamie. Holy smoke! Yes, Collins? Well, your clothes. You, you've you come calling, Miss Connell, in little more than a nightshirt. Yes? Why, I'm more covered up than if I were wearing an evening dress. At home, I often wear hostess pajamas. But, but you're not at home. You are? What's the difference? My, my. Oh, do you approve, Mamie? Oh, I think it's very sick, ma'am. Very sick. There you are, another woman's opinion. But, but why? Because my father is sore at me. I had to pretend I was planning to be at home for the evening. And then there's Alfred the butler and Herman. And if any one of them had the well, slightest... That's, that's I... enough, killer. Come on, let's get it over with. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Mother, I'd like you to meet my friend, Miss Connell. How do you do, Mrs. Lang? Good. Good evening. Uh, my guest, Miss Connell, Judge and Mrs. Fraser. How, How do you do, Judge? Mr. Provisor, Mr. Provisor. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I've been awfully anxious to meet you, Mrs. Lang. Collier has spoken of you so often. Thank you. Uh, that's a charming fragrance you're using, Miss Connell. Who do you really like it, Mrs. Fraser? You see, I did a perfume advertisement once, and they gave me just gallons of it. Oh. <laughs> All right. Are you a model, Miss Connell? Oh, no, no, Judge. I just did this one ad, and unfortunately it burned my father up. I'm not allowed out nights on account of it. Oh, you're not? Oh, no. I'm only here because I sneaked out in my pajamas uh, and well, that's... Oh, uh, well, pardon me, but, uh, <laughs> Would uh, anyone care for a drink or something? A cocktail, beer, highball, You've seven up, I... You've duty as a host, dear. Now, keep quiet. I want to talk to Miss Connell. But don't you think, uh, uh... No... Well, being with you, Mrs. Lang, makes me understand where Collier gets his charm and sex appeal. Oh, just call him Collie, dear. There's no need to be formal. Oh, I know you've been a wonderful mother to Collie. Else how could he have developed into such a dreamboat? Mrs. Lang, could I hope that you would find it in your heart to be a mother to me? Why, my dear child. Oh, thank you. Mrs. Lang, I don't want to seem to press you for a decision, but did you know that Collie is a romantic dreamer, emotional, impulsive, quick to embrace life? Oh, well, that side of his nature seems to have been hidden from me. Oh, but he is. And our meeting, well, our meeting was like a, a passionel advertisement, if ever you've had the occasion to read one. No, no, I haven't, but... Tell me. Well, there was the awakening, the enchantment, the feeling of abandonment the, the manufacturers warn you to be careful of. Collie put it very well himself. He said it was youth calling to youth. Yes, he always was a phrase maker. Oh, but I intend to do the right thing, Mrs. Lang. And that's why I came to you tonight. Well, I can tell you how grateful well, I am. Of course, Collie wanted to wait, but... After all, we women are the practical ones, the home builders. 
the preservers of the race. I said it must be at once. And now you know everything. Mother. <laughs> well, uh, Collie, anything to add to this? No, oh, no, 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 nothing at all, except I, I think we ought to be going. Oh, yes. Yes, we've taken up enough of everyone's time. Oh, yes, oh, no, no. Well, yes. good night, everybody. And you've been simply elegant, Mrs. Lang. Thank you. And I hope you'll all forgive me for going on like this, but when one finds herself a part of the scheme of boy meets girl and the inevitable happens, well, then I'm well, sure Well, uh, good night, everybody. Uh, good night. There's your coat, Miss Connell. Oh, thank you. Good night, Mr. Collie. Good night, Mamie. Good night. Mr. Collie, you never had a girl like that before. I take no credit for it, Mamie. That could have happened to anyone. Well, uh, how's this killer? The table satisfactory? Oh, it's just lovely, Collie. Do you think your mother was impressed? There must be a stronger word. Oh, thank you, Collie. Well, shall we dance? If you don't mind my stumbling, you see, I've had just a teeny-weeny case of shock tonight. Oh, boy. Now I get you in my arms. I've been concealing something from you, Colin. I don't believe it. Well, there's, there's been another man in my life. Tell me all, killer. I'll understand. Oh, I hope so. You see, this man sent me a lot of terribly expensive jewelry. Oh? His name is Peter Vellon, and he's very much in love with me. Of course, I don't care anything about him, but I have the feeling that he has the feeling I'm going to marry him. Well, uh, we'll just have a nice, frank talk with this gentleman. Uh, where is he? I don't know. Otherwise, I would have returned the jewels when they arrived. I haven't even heard from him in weeks. Only I'm afraid that if he hears about us, he might... Well, you see, he's sort of excited. Oh, you, you think he might cause trouble for us, huh? Well, yes. Yes, I do. But, oh, don't you worry, Collie. I'll protect you. Why, I'd be like a tigress if anybody tried to hurt you. Well, that's good enough for me. Well, now that I've told you all the bad things, I'd like to state that I'm 19 years of age, sound in wind and limb, and as far as money is concerned, I'm loaded. Oh, well, this is beautiful, but... Uh... <clears throat> Do you think that we ought to louse it up with the discussion of material things? Holly, Holly, what I'm trying to say is... Oh, I wish I could ask you this in the setting you deserve. Moonlight, orange blossom flowers. Why don't you get down on your knees? Oh, gladly. Oh, no, no, no. I was, I was only kidding. About it. Go on, here, here's our table. Come on, let's sit down, shall we? I was about to say, Holly... Would you mind changing my name to Lang? Well, uh, killer, this is, this is pretty sudden. Oh, it's no use, Collie. I can't go on like this. Will you be mine? Well, just give me a, a little time, a moment to be alone with my thoughts. Your answer is no, isn't it? Well, I, I, I well, you see, well, killer, say I... goodbye to your mother for me, won't you? Tell her it was nice being her daughter, even but if, if only... if I'm hesitating, it's only because I want to hold on to this moment. How many moments are there like this in a man's lifetime? <laughs> then you'll be mine? Well, you've won me, killer. Oh, Polly. You've made me the happiest woman in the world. Do you mind if I kiss you? Well, I... Mm. And again? Well, killer! And again? Killer, please! Come on, take it easy. Oh, darling, I suppose you've always dreamed of a big church wedding with your mother and all your friends there. Well, yes, it is the most important day in a man's life. He gets to wear a carnation and striped trousers, and then there are the presents. Oh, I'm awfully sorry, dear, but we'll have to elope tonight. Tonight? Oh, but uh, uh, well, Mother and I believe in long engagements. Oh, well, and... if not tonight, at least tomorrow. We can go to Las Vegas and your mother can come with us. Oh, no, no, no. Let's leave mother out of this. Uh, besides, look, I, I have to speak to a friend of mine. He's a colonel in the army. I wouldn't make a move without him. But we are going to Las Vegas. Oh, oh yes. Yes, in the morning. Oh, that's wonderful, Colin. In the years to come, I'll make it up to you for being cheated out of a big formal wedding. 
I'll just love you to pieces. I'll give you my devotion, my fortune, my soul. That's enough. Thank you. And if I can spend the rest of my life hanging around you and running your errands and necking you, I'll never want another single thing. Dig you, Killer, I've got to get out of here. Whatever you say, darling. Oh, let me get the check. A oh, waiter. Waiter, please. What happened, Colonel Head? Then I, I brought Miss Connell home and came right over here to your hotel. Colonel, listen, that girl expects me to marry her tomorrow. Why, that's splendid, Captain. Splendid. Oh, we're supposed to elope to Las Vegas in the morning. Now, sir, look, I am just as patriotic as the next man, but for me, this is the end of the trail. Nonsense. This elopement is just what we've been waiting for. We'll splash pictures all over the front page of the newspapers. We'll give it to the news commentators. And by nightfall, we'll have Peter Vellon out in the open. And me married. Oh, not a chance. Excuse me, sir, but, but you don't... Don't know Miss Connell. But we've made a thorough check on Vellon. He's definitely not the type to allow another man to marry his girl. He's an extremely violent but, personality. But, but, Colonel... Now, you he... listen to me. You'll go by automobile to Las Vegas, drive slowly, and give Vellon an opportunity to catch up with you. Then we'll step in and take over. Oh, take over. We'll have some of our men contact you along the way. Uh, how, how will I know them? Oh, easily. Uh, they'll be reading a newspaper and eating an apple. Well... Anything wrong with that? There's something wrong with the whole idea. It's it's all a dirty trick on the kid. She happens to be in love with me. Oh, that's ridiculous. Inside of a week and a half, she'll have forgotten all about you. Couldn't I, uh... Well, couldn't I just maybe go to her and, and uh, get out of it in a nice way? I could say, um... Well, I, I could say, once more, my darling, so say goodbye, we oh, must... Oh, go home. I've got some phoning to do. Yes, sir. Collie, is that you? Oh, hello, Mother. Couldn't you sleep? Sleep? I've been revolving like a lathe ever since you brought that fantastic creature here. Yeah, she's an amazing little thing, isn't she? I, I knew you'd like her. Well, good night, madam. Just a minute. Are you going to marry that, that blurb for a perfume distillery? Madam, we must not judge too harshly by outward events. Sometimes, although the truth appears plain, it is more hidden than we know. You've been trapped. I don't know what you promised her, but she can't get away with it. Well, as a mother, you're naturally... Stop little... thinking of me as your mother. I'm talking to you as your attorney. I'm not going to let you be the victim of a deranged siren in Nightwale. If we stand together, boy, we can beat this rap. Madam, there is no rap to beat. I'll have you declared mentally incompetent. Say you were drugged by, by, by that perfume. Carly, I beg of you, trust me. A boy's best friend is his mother. I trust you. Good night, dear. And don't worry. Mother will take care of everything. Thanks. Man's best friend. Boy's best friend. Man's best friend is the dog. <laughs> the following morning. All night long, Collier has waited, hopefully, for a phone call from the colonel telling him of a change in plans. But the phone never rang, not even a wrong number. And now, a reluctant young man and a blissful and beautiful girl are well on their way to Las Vegas. Is that all you brought, killer tennis rackets and a jockey cap? Oh, I had a suitcase all packed, darling. But I think Herman was suspicious. Herman? Oh, oh, yes, your bodyguard. But uh, after all, a honeymoon in a T-shirt. Do you really feel this outfit is too conspicuous? Oh, it's just a strange quirk in my nature, Pat. Ignore it. Oh, yes, Collie. Let's not bother about trifles. I'm so happy, I think I'm going to bust. Oh, just one more thing. Hmm. Uh, can't you drive any faster than 15 miles an hour? But uh, this is the most beautiful day in a man's life. I, I want to make it last. Oh, Collie. Oh, look, look, apples. Apples? Yeah, yeah, right over there. You see, you see that man reading the paper? He's got an apple stand. Now, you just stay where you are, killer. I'll be right back. Apples, mister? What do you think? Your name, Wang? Yeah, yeah. Any word on Vellon? I know. I was hoping you'd have some word for me. Oh, that's great, great. 
That's the girl in the car, huh? Hey, not bad. Let's everybody keep his mind on his own business, huh? Now, uh, what about the morning paper? You're all over them, pal. You and the girl. On the radio, too. Villain can't miss finding out about you, too. I'm beginning to wonder. Didn't you buy any apples? No, no. Worst-looking apples I ever saw. Poor Collie. Yeah. You know, I'm worried. Well, who isn't nowadays? I mean, about you. You're so nervous. Oh, well, no more than the average man, I guess. Oh, there's nothing to be afraid of, dear. I'll be awfully gentle and tender. Uh, killer, uh, I, uh, uh, look, wouldn't you like something to eat? Uh, that looks like a lunch room up ahead there. Oh, whatever you want, darling. Yeah, well, let's, let's get a hamburger. Sure you've had enough, killer? <gasps> Oh, I couldn't eat another bite. We have plenty of time, you know. Oh, uh, waiter, uh, are those apples on the counter down there? Nicola Peace, you want one? Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to look them over first. Go ahead, look them over. I'll be right back, killer. I, uh, I beg your pardon? Yeah, the bowl of apples? <clears throat> well, any word? Any word? Yeah, are you nuts? I'm... I'm Captain Lang. That's Marita Connell down there. You know, the debutante. We're on our way to Las Vegas. The... Oh. Sorry, mister. I guess I made a mistake. Hey, wait a minute, you. I've just been reading about you in this newspaper. I'm a family man, see, and I got a daughter just about her age, see? So get this, you. I'm pushing my truck into Vegas tonight, and I'm going to be looking around for you. And if you ain't married that kid or sent her home where she belongs, it's going to be just too bad. Aren't see? you being just a little ridiculous? See, that butter I'll bat your ears in now. What does that man want, darling? He wanted to know where I have my ears. Uh, I mean, my, my suits made. Oh, uh, waiter, another hamburger, please. <laughs> Polly, isn't it bad for a car to drive in low gear for a long time? Well, we're we're approaching Las Vegas. You wouldn't want me to drive like one of those speed maniacs, would you? Well, I only hope tomorrow will be as nice a day as this. Tomorrow? Yes, killer, for, for our wedding. Well, why not tonight? Oh, well, you want time to buy a wedding dress. Well, what's and, the matter uh, with now in my T-shirt? Well, it, it's so late and we're... Uh, Tired and dusty. And, and in the meantime? Well, I I thought we could go to some nice little motor court. Aha. Uh -huh. What do you mean, aha? Uh -huh. It's all becoming very clear to me. Killer, surely you can't suspect me of being a cat. Oh, yes, I can. My dear girl, nothing could be further from my thoughts. We we'll just have to wait for a few hours, that's all. Together? Well, I I hate for us to be parted. Aha. Uh -huh. Killer, please. Have blind confidence in me just for tonight. At least I know, even at the cost of a broken Don't heart. Don't say that. I have been betrayed. My intentions were honorable and yours were not. It's that simple. It is not that simple. Sometimes, although the truth appears plain, it is more hidden than we know. Can't we discuss your loathsome character on an unemotional basis? Well, we can try. Only first, let's find us a place to stay. Well, this is it, Keller. They only had this one cottage left. It's not too elegant. Oh, a sordid shack or a luxurious hotel. What does the setting matter in your little game of love? Now, look, we've been to every place in town, haven't we? Can I help it if they only had the one cottage? Well, you heard me ask for two, didn't you? Uh-huh. And if you say, uh-huh, once more, I'll... You what? Nothing. Just go and get in there. Long engagements, he said. You certainly had me fooled. Believe me, killer, this is only for a few hours. Then I suppose you'll cast me aside like an old coat. Like an old shoe. Don't shout at me. I'm terribly sorry, but if you'd only... And now I suppose you'll go your way and find someone else who will come to you bearing her heart on her sleeve. Killer, please, please, just sit down. And now. I... I'll grow old with my memories. A welfare worker... Trudging through the streets, a 
An empty shell. A tragic vessel of loneliness and desolation. Oh, shut up! That's right. Shout at me. Hit me. Beat me. I'm in your power, alone in a motor court, a helpless slave. There is a constitutional amendment in this country which forbids slavery. Now sit down there and behave yourself. We may have a long wait. A long wait for what? Never mind. Collie? Yes. Do you propose to make me yours in the morning? No. And if you will, please... Peter! I'm warning you both. I've got a gun, and if you try Peter, to do it... Anything... Peter Vellum? Well, of course, he's the one I told you. Steal my him. girl, will you? Well, I'm going to fix you so you'll never steal anybody else's girl again. Oh, I know you must be a little upset, Peter, You but thought you... I'd let you get away with this. Well, you're going with me, understand? Tonight! But I... <laughs> I don't think he's dead, Collie. Just unconscious, I think. Yeah. I hope so. How are you? Oh, fine, fine. Thanks for clunking him with that vase. What are we going to do with him? I have some friends who've been dying to see Peter Vellon for a long time. They'll be dropping in here any moment now. Look, Killer, what I have to explain is pretty complicated, so please listen carefully. Well... Well, if uh, if I didn't do my duty, if, if people didn't do their duty, why, uh, well, there, there wouldn't be any family of nations, and there wouldn't be any law and order, any freedom of the seas, or, or uh, do you follow me? I'm not clear about the freedom of the seas. Oh. Uh, well, you see, the whole thing was Colonel Head's idea. Uh, he, uh, that must be the colonel now. Let him explain it. Come on in, sir. Herman! Are oh, you kill us? Call you, I warned you. Remember? Now, now, look, Herman, now, look. Then, I... see, seven times contender for the middleweight crowd. Yeah, 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 I know, and I'm... I'm per... Herman! Oh, Collie. Collie, are you all right? Let him get up, then I'll do it again. Collie. Oh, Collie, you were explaining something to me about... The colonel will explain everything. Come on in, colonel. Colonel? Him? I told you before, and I haven't got what I do oh, yet. Yeah, you're the truck driver, aren't you? Well, now, if you'll just let me explain Who how this thing... Who wants Oh, now you've knocked him down. Oh, Collie. Collie. Hi. Well, it's all your own fault, picking fights with everybody. But I didn't either. Well, I'm not going to make the same mistake this time. Where's Velen's gun? Easy, Captain, easy. Come in, men. Hello, look, eagles on his shoulders in three MP. Are you all right, Captain? Well, I'm not quite certain. Anyway, that, that's your man over there in the corner, Peter Vellon. These two gentlemen are innocent proponents of misguided chivalry. Say that again, bud. Just say that again. <laughs> Splendid job, Captain. Splendid. Now, just a minute. After all, Vellon's quite a catch, and uh, you, Miss Connell, I... I feel that we owe you some explanation. You see, this was all a carefully planned scheme. You don't have to explain anything. I'm not exactly dumb, you know. Well, Miss Connell. Oh, 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 now, please. Please, Miss Connell. Oh, I'm not the only one who followed you here to Las Vegas, Collie. In case you don't know it. Her father's here, too. You don't mind, Mother. I well, I think it's lovely here. I like this hotel. I think we should spend a few days as long as we're here. Well, I don't. I'm going home. Conscience bothering you? Well, after all, you were only acting for the government. I didn't have to act so well. Oh, for heaven's sake, in a month you'll have forgotten all about you. I wish people wouldn't keep on saying that. Well, there's no point hanging around the lobby. I think I'll see what's doing in the casino. May I lend you some money for Ah, the Captain Lang, good morning. Oh, Mr. Connell. Congratulations, Captain. You uh, did a good job. Thank you. Uh, oh, uh, this is my mother, Miss Connell. Oh, we met last night, Collie, yes. while the doctor was tending your lump. Oh, uh, uh, well, uh, how is Miss Connell this morning? Sir? Oh, fine, fine. She's sore as a boil at you, of course. So was I, for that matter, until I learned the truth. But don't worry, in a month, she'll have forgotten all about you. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, good morning, Captain. Just trying my luck at a little roulette. Care to step in? No, thanks, Colonel. 
I just want to ask you something. Uh, man to man, sir, you've seen Miss Connell. Do you think she's brokenhearted? I mean, do you think I ought to, you know, do the honorable thing? Nonsense. Well, uh, yeah, I'm a little worried about the legal aspects. Don't you think I ought to marry her to avoid prosecution, I mean? Don't be silly. The FBI will make sure that no charges are filed. Thank you very much. Everybody's being so helpful. Oh, good morning, Captain. Sir? At ease, Herman. I've been demobilized. How's the uh, killer? Oh, very well, sir. That's her over there in the corner playing the slot machine. Well, maybe I'd better... Uh... She says you're a perfect gentleman, sir, and she'd like to kill you, sir. Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry I threw that right cross at you last night. Well, I'm just... sorry I got in the way of yes. it. Uh, tell me something, Herman. Sir. Do you think I ought to make just one more sacrifice for the United States government? Like what, sir? Well, you know, you know, do the right thing. After all, I did put the killer in a very embarrassing position. Uh, who's embarrassed? Everybody knows now you was just doing your duty. Uh, you're a big help, too. You know, you can uh, never beat a slot machine killer. Oh, it's you. What's left of me. And uh, you're never going to hit the jackpot yanking at the handle like that. Go away. Oh, now, killer, please listen to me. Get down on your knees. Gladly. Don't you dare. Just go away. Now, look, you've got to believe me. I'm talking to you as a man. Now, not as an actor or even as a public servant, but... Now, look, if you don't stop mistreating that slot machine, it's going to... Hey, killer, killer, look out! Holy... Come, come closer, killer. Oh, Polly, Polly. Once more, my darling. If say goodbye, we must. Once more, let me look at you. Polly, no, no. And remember, this look must last me through all the years, all through the emptiness ahead into the final darkness of the grave. What a ham! Oh, no. No, I'm not going to leave you. I'll never leave you. Ain't nobody going to get a doctor at the slot machine. He's all over silver dollars. Relax, Herman. He doesn't want a doctor, just an audience. Never more can I speak your name. Never more can I hold you close and whisper, I love you. I love you. Oh, Collie, you're wonderful. Kiss me, killer. Who said I wouldn't hit the jackpot? <laughs> Goodbye to Once More My Darling and our hearty congratulations to our stars, Van Heflin and Anne Blythe. Van, did you make any unusual New Year's resolutions this year? Well, yes, Bill. I've resolved to uh, read a page of the encyclopedia every day. Oh, that's wonderful, Van, but why? Well, you see, my two little daughters used to think that I knew everything, but lately they've uh, lost confidence in me. <laughs> what was the matter? Couldn't you name all of Santa's reindeer? <laughs> or explain no. what color is blue? Oh, no, no, it's worse than that. I, I couldn't tell him what uh, the thing is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think you'll find it in the encyclopedia. But it will help you with the rest of their questions. And how about you? Any good resolutions? Well, yes, Bill. I made a resolution to study, too. But something a little more practical for me... My singing. Good, Anne, because we always like to hear you sing. And I hope you've resolved to continue to care for that um, lovely complexion. I wouldn't miss my Lux facials, Bill. I've always been a Lux soap fan. Then we're certainly glad you came back to New York for our show. You know, I thought you were looking for a play to do on Broadway. Well, I am, Bill, but so far I haven't found the right one. I, I thought I'd like a, you know, a change of pace from drama, maybe, you know, a good comedy. Mm, that'd be wonderful, Van. Oh, can you tell funny stories, too? Can I? <clears throat> well, now, let me tell you the one about the farmer's daughter. <laughs> no, 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 let me tell it. Because, you see, that's our play for next week. 
The Farmer's Daughter. And I know our audience will be delighted when I tell you that we'll have the original stars, Loretta Young and Joseph Cotton. Don't miss this refreshing RKO comedy that won Loretta Young an Academy Award. We certainly won't, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, and all our thanks. <laughs>